then a paper box that isn't flattened by a road hammer a few dents here but that's all and it really is made of paper layers of paper flat layers and corrugated layers now I've cut a piece away here so you can see the corrugations more clearly they're like rows of arches and that's what we're looking at today. What shapes make things stiff and strong? Our first visit is to St. Edward's Primary School in Airdrie. They're carrying out their tests on pieces of thin card. In this first test, there are two pieces of card, one on top of the other, making a bridge across the books. How much weight will it take before sagging? Five grams? No sagging. Now, 10 grams. Still no sagging. 20. But with 20 grams, it, it just sags. And they record that weight. 20. They did the test three times before moving on to the next one, which is with two pieces of card stapled together. This time it doesn't sag with 20 grams. It takes 40 grams, twice as much as the unstapled cards. Stapling them together gives them strength. This idea of joining layers together can be very useful. This is a wooden matchbox. It's made up of a very thin layer of wood. Now, I can break it very easily along the grain. But the opposite way, against the grain, needs quite a bit of pressure to break it. And even then, it doesn't come apart unless you twist it. Here's a slightly thicker piece. Along the grain, it breaks easily. But across the grain, it's much stronger. It really does take some effort to break it. Now, layers like these are joined together to make plywood. This is five ply. You can see. The first, the third, and the fifth layer have the grain all going the same way. And the second and the fourth layer go the opposite way. And when they're all stuck together, that plywood is very, very strong both ways. Now, you can get plywood in any number of odd layers. This is three ply, five ply again, seven ply and this one is 27 ply now we thought you'd like to see just how strong plywood can be so Beverly and Malcolm have gone out to test first three ply and then 27 ply <laughs>
Uh, Maury the elephant weighs nearly three tons. I shouldn't like to be underneath when she's walking across, though. You might like to know that we tested the 27 ply and we found that it supported over seven tons without breaking. So, no matter how weak and thin the layer is, if you have enough joined together, then it can support the weight of more than two elephants. Now, the children at St. Edward's School in Airdrie also tested the effect of folding their card into different shapes. They folded each card into an L shape and tried to balance the lid. Disaster. So they tried again. But the cards still just fall over. They have a great idea. Why not put blocks between the cards? Looks hopeful. 20 grams, 30 grams, 40 grams and no sag yet, 50 grams and it's still holding, 55 grams. So the two cards folded into an L shape took four times more weight than the two unstapled flat cards. Just as folding the paper into an L shape stiffened and strengthened it, so does folding other materials strengthen them. Malcolm has been finding out. Where are you, Malcolm? Well, David, I'm in a factory where they make steel shelving, which has to be very strong. In this storage area behind me, there are 12 levels of shelving, divided into bays which go from floor to ceiling. Now, each bay has to take a load of up to two tons, so it has to be very strong and rigid. It's no good if it bends. The shelves are stamped out in this press. Now, at this stage, they look like this, perfectly flat. <laughs> Next, the sides are going to be turned over into a kind of L shape. So that it looks like this. How do they know the shelf is strong enough, Mum? Well, they put a very heavy load on it, David. Much heavier than it would normally carry. Well, that happens over in the testing bay. The shelf is designed to carry 175 kilograms. The weight on there now. Let's see how much more it can take. 250 kilograms. 275 kilograms. 300 kilograms. 325 kilograms. 350 kilograms. It took twice the weight it was designed for before it buckled and gave way. And there you can see just where it did buckle. They also have a more accurate test for the breaking point of the shelves. It's a ram test. This time the shelf is upside down and the rams push up until the shelf buckles. The shelf went at 330 kilograms. That's nearly twice the weight it was designed to take. That's very impressive, Malcolm. Do you know what would happen if it wasn't folded? Can you test that? No sooner said than done, David. Now here we've got a piece of flat steel. And David's going to put a 28 pound weight on it. That's 12 and a half kilos. What about the uprights, Malcolm? They must have to be very strong. Oh, yes, they are, David. And again, the L shape's important. I'll show you. I've got here a piece of steel that they use for making the uprights. And uh, you wouldn't hold very much up with that, would you? Once they put the L shape in, it makes an enormous difference. So there you are, David. Even when you use something as hard as steel, you can still make it stronger by putting a shape in it. Thanks very much, Malcolm. 
There's more information about testing stiff shapes in the Science Workshop book. Try out the ideas and remember to record the results of your tests. Another shape that the children at St Edward's tested was the arch. First, they formed the card into an arch between the books and adjusted the books until they were just the right distance apart. Now for the weights. 20 grams. 40 grams. 50 grams, and it starts to sag. All through the tests, they have kept records of their results. Remember, they did each test three times, and in their records, they ringed the median. They also wrote down their comments about each test. The arch is a very strong shape. You remember that the box we hammered had three layers of arches in it, which is just as well, because inside are these. Cartons of Easter eggs, covered in polythene to stop them shaking about, enclosed in a, a strong carton box. Inside an unbroken chocolate egg. 50 million Easter eggs are sold in Britain every year, and nobody wants to buy a broken one. So it's very important that the carton they're packed in is strong enough to support it. Beverly's been finding out. Where are you, Beverly? This is the packing line of a chocolate factory, which turns out over 20 million Easter eggs in cartons every year. The cartons are designed to open easily into the right shape and to be strong enough to protect the egg. How do they know the box is safe, Beverly? Well, it's quite a story, David, and it begins a whole year before the Easter eggs are actually needed. Chris Clough is the package designer, and we asked him to show us how he designed the carton. First, he drew the design of arches and L shapes, which he knows will give the carton its strength. It must also fit exactly around the egg. Next, he made an accurate drawing on card and cut out the shape. Then he scored the card where it was going to be folded. Finally, he glued the sides of the carton together. Remember, the success of the design depended on how this flat carton could be made up in one movement into a strong, arched, protective package for the egg. The tests on Chris's design were done a year ago, but Bruce Moore, the manufacturer's packaging expert, agreed to show us what they did. First, there's the travel test. The cartons with the eggs in are sent on a journey from Birmingham to Bristol and back. While they're on their way, we'll look at the other tests. First, the drop test. The cartons are dropped onto different sides and then checked for any damage. The outside seems all right. But what about the egg? No damage at all. What's this test for, Bruce? This is a compression test. What do you mean by compression? Well, we put a lot of weight on top of the cartons and see what happens to them. Watch. And that's the that point means... of collapse. 
Well, it looks all right from outside. Yes. We'll have a look at some of the cartons. What's wrong with that? Well, it's coming out of the side. That's right, it's what coming out of the... What about the egg inside? Well, we'll have a look, see what's happened. Nothing's wrong. The egg looks OK. No egg will ever get shaken as much as this in real life. So if they stand this, they should stand anything. And again, no damage. Finally, the eggs that went to Bristol on the test journey, let's see what happened to them. They're none the worse for their journey. All these tests were to make sure that the eggs you buy in the shop are packed in a carton that keeps them as whole as when they left the factory. By the way, David, they've said that I can bring back an egg for each of you. Thank them very much for his Beverly. I will, David. Well, that's a nice surprise, Malcolm, isn't it? Well, I've got a surprise for you, David. I oh, know, what's that? Well, it's very impressive the way the package protected the egg. But the egg shape itself is pretty strong. Mm -hmm. but in True. fact, I've got an egg that can take the weight of an elephant. An egg that can bear the weight of an elephant? Mm hmm. This I've got to see. One chocolate egg, one elephant. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 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 <clears throat>